Hello, everybody. This is Mona Farouk. I am a professor at Busan University of Foreign Studies. Uh, I'm teaching Arabic and also a researcher of uh, the Institute of Mediterranean Studies. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk to you about my country, Egypt. Uh, I will start sharing the screen with my presentation. So our topic today is about multiculturalism and the cultural diversity in Egypt. So let's start with exploring the two concepts of cultural diversity and multiculturalism. The two concepts are so similar. We can simply say that cultural diversity uh, refers to the existence of a variety of cultures in one society, while multiculturalism refers to a case of maintaining the distinctive identities of uh, different culture, um, uh, different cultural groups living together in the same society of that uh, cultural diversity. So in this sense, multiculturalism is opposite to the concept of a cultural melting pot, which is still assimilating different cultural groups into the dominant culture. Uh, so accordingly, we can say that um, issues like uh, the issues of minorities uh, are relative uh, more to the concept of multiculturalism, as this term um, include uh, like a defense for the rights of those uh, minorities to maintain their own uh, distinctive cultural uh, features. So today we are gonna uh, explore the two terms in the Egyptian society. We can see that uh, Egypt has a cultural diversity that can be seen in many different cultures uh, mixed together in, uh, inside the uh, so, uh, Egyptian society. Actually, we have um, uh, cultures of uh, the ancient Egyptian, we have culture of Arab, Coptic, um, uh, Western, Turkish, and other cultures all mixed together and exchanged throughout the uh, history. Uh, we have long period of uh, foreign rulers and uh, foreign settlers uh, as well, uh, which contribute to the uh, multiculturalism. So speaking about multiculturalism, we can speak also about uh, uh, distinctive cultural groups like uh, Nubians, like uh, Berbers, Bedouins, and other uh, many uh, foreign refugees are also are living in Egypt. So uh, thinking about the factors for this uh, cultural diversity, I guess we need to, um, uh, to discuss the uh, importance of Egypt's uh, geographical location and its impact on this diversity of cultures. As Egypt has one of the oldest civilization on earth, um, the ancient Egyptian civilization, uh, it has its uh, contributions to the culture of mankind, mankind not only in Egypt, but also uh, around the world. So throughout history, uh, Egypt played a leading role in the Mediterranean region, uh, which is in a central location of the world. As a strategic uh, geographical location of Egypt gave her this importance, not only among her uh, neighboring countries, but also to other countries seeking for uh, interests uh, in Egypt. So seeing the location, uh, the geographical location of Egypt through this map, we can see that Egypt is a part of uh, many world, world uh, part of the Arab world, part of Africa, Asia, uh, by the uh, Asian land of um, Sinai Peninsula, and also part of the Mediterranean region. And uh, Egypt is linking all those worlds together also 
through the Swiss Canal, uh, which is linking between the uh, Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. So, uh, as you see with this central uh, location uh, in the center of the world, uh, Egypt had the, the chance to get all those culture uh, surrounding it. And um, Africa, Asia, Middle East, the Arab world and the Mediterranean region, all those regions and uh, had their impact and their influence on Egyptian uh, culture due to this strategic location in the middle of the world. So now let's take an overview on Egyptian uh, population. As Egypt is the most populous uh, country in the, wo in the world, um, uh, or let's say in the in entire Middle East. Uh, actually, it's the third um, most populous country in Africa and the most uh, uh, within the Arab countries. So about 95% of the Egyptian uh, people are living, as you see in this map, in this small area around the banks of the Nile River and some parts of here on the uh, Mediterranean coast and in um, uh, the cities around the uh, Swiss Canal. So uh, taking a look uh, at the Egyptian cities, we can see that uh, each city in Egypt had its, it has its own uh, dis distinctive features um, uh, of culture, uh, which is different from other cities. So, for example, the cities on the Mediterranean coast, like Alexandria, has uh, more influenced by the uh, Mediterranean culture with its long history of uh, being a capital of the Greek and Roman Empire. Uh, in some other cities, like in Aswan and uh, in Abu Simbel, we can see the Nubian uh, culture uh, vivid there. Also, the um, places or cities like uh, Luxor, we can examine there the ancient Egyptian uh, monuments the, this, uh, uh, with this culture of uh, ancient Egyptians. Also, we can find the Bedouin uh, culture in um, uh, Sinai uh, Peninsula and in the oases uh, on the um, deserts of Egypt. So for thousands of years, Egypt was a world power, uh, but after being conquered uh, initially by Persians and then by Greeks, Romans, Arabs, Ot Ottoman, and finally British, Egypt's culture uh, was uh, like um, a fusion of all those uh, past empires. Um, and also having the Swiss Canal in the Egyptian land, uh, make, make it uh, the trade through fair um, uh, that linking all the, uh, the region around, all, all the world around through the, this canal. So now let's uh, examine the multiculturalism and cultural diversity in Egypt through Egypt's long history. Actually, in ancient times, Egypt was ruled for the three centuries by Greeks, starting from Alexander the Great to Cleopatra. Uh, Greeks ruled Egypt not so much as foreign rulers, but as the next dynasty following pharaohs, uh, introducing themselves as direct descendants of Egyptian uh, pharaohs. 
This was clear in the influence of the pharaonic style in the Greek uh, monuments and the interaction between Greek and Egyptian art, uh, art, um, architecture. Uh, thus, the, the um, uh, Greek rulers, beginning with Alexander the Great, uh, the Great um, adopted the status of pharaohs and built temples for Egyptian gods and uh, together with uh, Greek gods, emphasizing the links between them. So the Greek royal family in Egypt, the Ptolemies, uh, were influenced by the Egyptian culture in many aspects. Among those uh, Egyptian customs uh, embraced by Greeks, we can find the, the uh, custom of um, marriage between uh, brother and sisters to keep political power in the royal family. So uh, during the Greek era, uh, Greeks and um, uh, the, uh, the, for the language, Greek and the uh, Egyptian language also mixed uh, to influence each other as the, the official uh, affairs were conducted in Greek and demotic, which is um, a phase of Egyptian uh, language used by the ordinary people instead of hieroglyphs, which was formal. So uh, uh, also uh, other languages um, were used in the public life, including Hebrew, uh, Aramic, um, as a language of uh, migrants and visitors to Egypt. So beginning with Greeks and followed by Romans, uh, foreigners uh, ruled Egypt persistently until the modern era. The last king of Egypt, King Farouk, was also foreigner or uh, of a foreign origin. He uh, his, um uh, roots um, Albanian and uh, for centuries Egyptians were ruled by foreigners and lived together with many different races. Uh, the cultures of those foreigners mixed together and interacted uh, with Egyptian culture resulting a unique culture. Uh, maybe if we um, see the uh, Egyptian dialect of Arabic, we can see this influence of those uh, foreign culture. Uh, actually, many are, um, uh, foreign words are uh, you can find in the Egyptian dialect. And uh, we have uh, even uh, words from the ancient times, uh, Egyptian, uh, the ancient Egyptian, and also uh, words from Turkish, from French, from uh, English language. So it's all uh, mixed, uh, used in the Egyptian dialect. So this is a list of the foreign rule in Egypt. So examining this uh, list, you can see many uh, various um, foreign rulers uh, ruled Egypt for a long time. So we have uh, Greek, Roman, then Persian, Persian for just a few years, but then uh, the uh, Islam, um, the Islam conquest came with a variety of uh, foreign rulers, starting with the Arab, and then uh, for Ptolemy dynasty and the uh, Akhshidid dynasty, they are Turkic of Uzbek origin. And then for Fatimid dynasty, uh, actually it also brought uh, another um, uh, dimension, cultural dimension, which is um, the influence of uh, Ismaili Shia. So uh, for this period of time of Fatimid uh, dynasty, the uh, Muslim in Egypt were uh, influenced by Ismaili Shia of North Africa. And then uh, Egypt was back to Sunni uh, through the Ayyubid uh, dynasty, which is uh, of Kurdish origin. You know Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, he is uh, so famous all over the world, he is from uh, Kurdish origin. Then we have Mamluk dynasties and Ottoman, they are uh, basically Turks of uh, Central Asia. Then we have European occupation, 
uh, French and then British. Actually, French occupation was just for three years. And then we have uh, a long period of Muhammad Ali's family's rule. Uh, Muhammad Ali, he was uh, born in uh, Greece, uh, Greece, in uh, Ma Macedonia, and he was of uh, uh, an Albanian family. So his, uh, his rule, or the rule of his family, uh, lasted till the last king of Egypt, Farouk, who, uh, uh, whose uh, rule uh, lasted till 1952. Actually, this uh, var variety of uh, foreign rule in Egypt um, had its influ influence and impacts that you can see in ev every area, in every city. So, uh, for example, uh, seeing the architecture in uh, Egypt, we can see this cultural diversity. So for example, in Cairo, we have Roman, Greek monuments. Uh, we have Arab, Muslim from many uh, different um, cultures. For example, here, the Roman, one of the Roman monuments in Egypt, in Cairo, you can see through this picture of Papillon Fortress. And in the same area of this Babylon uh, fortress, you can see nearby Amr ibn al-As Mosque, which is the first uh, Islam mosque in Egypt. Uh, actually, it was renewed and it's, it's, it, it doesn't have the same structure um, that it was uh, first built. Uh, but we have also um, this, Tulun, Ibn Tulun Mosque. We have it as the oldest mosque uh, exist in Egypt uh, with, with, it, with its uh, original form. It's, it's uh, still maintaining its original form. And, you know, Tulun, as I told you, he was uh, of uh, Uzbek origin. And for his, um, a mosque, he chose to have um, the minaret with this unique style, which you can't find in any other minaret in Egypt. This minaret is a copy of a, a, a Basid uh, mosque in Samarra city of Iraq. Then from the Ayyub the period, we can see this uh, citadel of Salah al-Din. And within this uh, citadel, you can see also other uh, monuments from other um, periods. So you can see here on the top, you can see this mosque of Muhammad Ali. It's uh, a Turk style. It's Turkish style from this period of Muhammad Ali's rule. This is his mosque. And then we have many other mosques uh, from uh, Mamluk, Mamluk period. This we call the Mamluk desert. desert. And also we still have many palaces from those different uh, ages. So we have, for example, this uh, Prince Taz Balas from Mamluk period. We have also Prince Bashtak Balas from Mamluk period. Zainab Khatun Balas. So all is still having its uh, uh, features and its uh, distinctive um, style of architecture. Uh, belonging to this period. We have this Sehemi house from Ottoman period. And now we call Cairo as the city of the thousand minarets. As you see, many minarets in Cairo, 
but you know you can distinguish between them according to uh, the period of those mosques so you can distinguish which um, style which uh, period of the history uh, this mosque is through the, those minarets i will tell you how <laughs> so as you see from these pictures this is the unique a minaret of Tulunid uh, Mosque, which I told you ab uh, about uh, its, uh, its story. Then we can see that uh, the Fatimid period has also a unique style of minaret, which we call it Tarbush. It's, um, it means it's like the hat, the Turkish hat. And similar to this uh, Fatimid minaret, you can see the Ayyubid minaret also with a little bit different details. Then Mamluki period, it's so different. The minaret was developed <laughs> having a double head or more, as you see here in those pictures. And then the Ottoman, period has totally different. We call it the, this style, we call it uh, pencil style. I will go back again to Muhammad Ali Mosque picture to show you this minaret, the style of this minaret. As you see, it's um, similar to the pencil. So we call it pencil style. And if you see this pencil style minaret, you can uh, so you can guess that this is a uh, Turkish uh, Ottoman mosque. So as you see, many minarets, more than thousand minarets, but through those minarets, you can see the diversity of uh, many cultures. So in this picture, you can see uh, the different designs for each uh, period of time. Also the dooms of the uh, mosques has also this, um, this different styles that you can guess uh, through it uh, from which period of time it, it was built. So now let's speak about the European cultures and its impacts on uh, the diversity, uh, the cultural diversity of Egyptian society. So the first European occupation of Egypt in the modern times was through uh, France uh, at the end of the 18th century. The French occupation didn't last so long, uh, but it actually had a great impact on Egyptian society as it was, uh, it's, uh, it opened the door for the Egyptian society to contact the European uh, Renaissance of that era. And that was after a long period for being away from this uh, Western influence. So uh, through the French uh, expedition, Egyptians were introduced to new uh, knowledge and new technology of that time. For example, the printing press was among those uh, technology introduced by uh, then to Egyptians through this French occupation. So through this uh, occupation, um, the first um, newspaper, uh, first English, uh, sorry, French and uh, Arabic uh, newspaper was published in Egypt. Then we can examine multiculturalism in the modern Egyptian society uh, through the rule of Muhammad Ali's family. Actually, this period uh, introduced more westernization for the uh, Egyptian society. Uh, Muhammad Ali is considered to be the founder of the modern Egypt. Uh, and this uh, was through his reform uh, project using European modern technology and promoting uh, Western education in Egypt. Thus, we can say that Muhammad Ali started the Western, uh, Westernization of Egypt 
and um, we can see this through uh, his um, project that included uh, dispatching Egyptian officials and officers to receive uh, training of uh, those technologies and modern education in Europe. In addition, he also sent the missions of Egyptian students to get their higher uh, education in uh, Europe, especially to France. So those Egyptian, Egyptian uh, officers or students, they, when they came back to Egypt, they brought with them uh, this uh, European culture and they contributed uh, thus to uh, westernization of the Egyptian society. We can see uh, their contribution in um, many phases of culture like literature, arts. So these westernization efforts continued under the rule of Muhammad Ali's uh, descendants till the last king uh, of Egypt. Actually, uh, promoting um, multiculturalism was vivid through uh, the so-called uh, cap capitulations. Capitulations is a system uh, of the privileges uh, was um, giving to providing, um, providing um, foreigners living on uh, Egypt or on the lands, actually uh, on other lands of uh, the Ottoman Empire as well, based on treaties between uh, the Ottomans and, uh, and their countries. So in according to this system, um, uh, European and uh, American residents and other foreigners also, they, they were um, provided by privileges of being exempted from uh, local taxation and being also subjected only to their own consular courts. So this system continued under the rule of Muhammad Ali's family, uh, which, uh, in which um, they uh, encouraged uh, foreigners to settle down in Egypt. So in this context, it's under, uh, understandable to see foreigners and Egyptians of foreign descent increasing in Egypt in, this, in that era of Muhammad Ali's family's uh, rule, and that they were uh, used in high rank official uh, positions. Uh, among them, we can see ministers like Nobar Basha, he was Armenian and uh, he was serving uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, grandson, Ismail. Actually, Ismail was so influenced by uh, European um, uh, culture and um, promoted this uh, French style uh, architecture of, uh, the, um, uh, of, uh, of, of the streets in Egypt. You can see this through, for example, this pictures of um, Tahrir Square and the town, uh, the downtown of Cairo. As you see, it's like seeing a, a French city, like seeing Paris uh, streets, right? So we have this European style uh, architecture. You can see it in many places in Cairo, influenced by that era. So accordingly, multiculturalism can be seen clear in the Egyptian society uh, with many foreigners settled in Egypt in that era, in addition to the ruling uh, elite being themselves of for foreign origin. So they welcomed and encouraged their um, peers. Uh, they encouraged foreigners to live in Egypt and uh, using them in high rank positions. Actually, the balances of that era witnessed the influence of the European culture and also witnessed the luxurious life of those foreigners in Egypt. Uh, we have many uh, examples for those um, luxurious palaces left by uh, Muhammad Ali's family and not even uh, Muhammad Ali's family's palace, also other uh, foreigners' palace, not from the rulers. So among them, we can see this Abdin palace. As you see, you can see it clearly that it's like French, European uh, palaces. This was the presidency palace since uh, 1873 until the 
end of uh, the last uh, king, uh, Farouk, in 1952. So also we can see the Saffron Palace. It was one of those uh, ro royal palaces of Muhammad Ali. And it's said to be um, the place where uh, King Farouk was born. You can see that it was a copy of French Versailles Palace. And now it belongs to the main campus of Ain Shams University. Not only the um, ruling elite had this luxurious uh, palaces, as you see this luxurious palaces is um, uh, the Sakakini, El Sakakini Palace. Uh, El Sakakini Basha who built this uh, palace was Syrian, uh, Syrian officer that worked for the Suez Canal uh, Company. And he also established the Roman Catholic uh, uh, Patriarchate and also the cemetery of Roman Catholic. So seeing the style of his palace, we can see the French uh, architecture and, and um, also the, actually the architect who built this uh, palace was Italian himself. Also another example uh, of um, this, multiculturalism, this uh, cultural diversity in architecture. Um, from this period, we have uh, Baron Impian uh, Palace. The palace was designed by uh, an architect, European architect from Belgium. And uh, uh, Baron Impian actually he also uh, established the city of uh, Heliopolis um, through his company. And uh, still we have this Baron Palace in the middle of Heliopolis, the city designed and established by this Belgium uh, man, the Baron Impain, who also established this church, Catholic Basilica Church, where he was buried. Not only we see this multiculturalism in Cairo, you can also uh, examine it in other cities. So for example, uh, seeing a city like Alexandria, which was called a cosmopolis or a, a, a city of multiculturalism, let's, let's say. So Alexandria was uh, and still is the main port in Egypt and the second largest city after Cairo. And um, the name itself of uh, this city carries meaning of this multiculturalism. Uh, the name is uh, referring to Alexander the Great, who had uh, a great contribution to the Greek uh, civilization and was the founder of this old city in Egypt, to be the capital of Egypt during the Greek rule and also during the Roman rule until the Arab conquest of Egypt. So Alexandria started with the Greek conquest of Egypt, which stated the cosmopolitan emergence of this city founded by Greeks in Egypt. During the Greek rule of Egypt, Alexandria was the center of Hellenic scholarship and science. The central rule of the Alexandria continued as the capital of Egypt during the Roman rule, leaving uh, great monuments uh, still remains till the present time. Alexandria also witnessed the Persian rule for a relatively short period. And uh, then the, uh, the Arab conquest 
uh, moved the capital from Alexandria to other city in Cairo, in El Fustat. So this multicultural uh, features of uh, Alexandria can be seen in the monuments is still uh, left, is still uh, remaining in Alexandria, uh, showing this mixture of Arab monuments together with other Greek Roman monuments. For example, here uh, you can see this um, museum, Greek uh, Roman uh, museum. It was founded by an Italian archaeologist and here, Qaid uh, Bay Fort, this was built in the 15th century by Mamluks, Turk. So you can see everywhere this mixture of various uh, culture. So uh, you can say that uh, Alexandria has a real model of multiculturalism. Uh, actually, actually, the mixture of civilization was enriched by Arab uh, con contribution, along with other contributions of Europeans settled in Alexandria. So we can namely refer to the period of Ottoman Empire, which began its uh, rule over Egypt in 1517. Uh, as Alexandria's rule uh, since that time increased to emerge as a main uh, base of um, base for the Ottoman fleet and an essential uh, commercial center uh, connecting with the uh, European uh, ports. This commercial rule had attracted immigrants from other countries all over the world to settle down in Alexandria, including traders from Italy, Maghreb, uh, Andalusia, Spain, and um, other parts of the Mediterranean uh, region. Of course, in, in addition to uh, Turkish um, cities like Istanbul and Anatolia and other parts of the Ottoman Empire. So foreign settlers in Alexandria uh, included variety of uh, nationalities, Turkish, Maghreb, uh, uh, Italians, Greeks, uh, they were invested in many trades such as textile, uh, coffee, spice. <laughs> Alexandria also witnessed the French campaign in Egypt in 1798. And Alexandria um, also uh, witnessed the um, British uh, occupation, which started from Alexandria. Uh, actually. So it, it became uh, the military base for the British forces and continued to be more cosmopolitan uh, under the um, uh, British uh, colonization. Actually, uh, one of those um, uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, uh, descendants, uh, Abbas Hilmi, the ruler of Egypt in uh, from 1892 till 1914. He has encouraged the multiculturalism in Alexandria so much. And he uh, actually he was born in Alexandria and he has some words um, like encouraging this uh, multicultural uh, feature of Alexandria. He was saying in my good city of Alexandria, I want there to be neither Foreigner, foreigners, nor natives, but only Alexandrians, re reveling and emulating each other for the progress of their city. Actually, multiculturalism was even seen in uh, his family and in his house. His, uh, he was married to uh, Austrian contest and has many, uh, um, he employed many uh, secretaries uh, of, of foreign origins. So European occupation and uh, its influence on uh, multiculturalism here in this part, we can see uh, a strong influence on the Western, uh, Western European culture on the uh, Egyptian society. 
uh, we have very long uh, occupation, British occupation, starting from 1882 till 1956. This was the date for the departure of the last British troops. So during these long periods, the foreign communities grew and increased. As foreigners and especially British um, and their allies were encouraged to settle uh, in Egypt with many privileges guaranteeing them with a life of good quality. So we can find many celebrities in Egypt uh, were foreigners. And for example, examining the Egyptian cinema uh, since its emergence, we can see many of those foreigners settled in Egypt. I can name uh, some of them, like uh, the Lebanese George Abiyad, the Jewish Italian Togo Mizrahi, um, Esteban Rusti, who uh, was a um, uh, famous uh, uh, actor of an Italian mother and Austrian father. So this, these are uh, just examples, few examples of many for those uh, foreigners settled in Egypt. So this long Western occupation had its impact on the Egyptian society that was sort of Westernized for this period. This can be seen in all Egyptian uh, movies of this period showing the life of Egyptian society, same like uh, European society. And not only for a uh, ruling class or the elite, uh, but also for uh, middle class and the educated society uh, that can be seen in the fashion of clothing, hairstyle, and even in social habits like alcohol drinking. So the numbers of foreign uh, settlers in Egypt reduced after the end of that uh, period of that uh, European British occupation. Uh, and actually due to the nationalization adopted by Egyptian President uh, Nasser. However, at the present time, those old foreign communities still have their marks in uh, Egyptian uh, society and some of them uh, remained taking uh, Egypt as their home. So we can trace Greeks, Turks, Italians, Armenians, and other foreign, foreigners still having uh, their own communities in uh, Egypt, in addition to many Egyptians uh, with foreign origins. So seeing this picture <laughs> uh, of uh, European style people, you know who are in this picture? Here is our last king of Muhammad Ali's uh, descendants. He is King Farouk and here are his sisters. So as you see, they totally westernized. But not only the elite, not only the, the rulers were westernized. Also, this is actually a picture of the Cairo street in 1941. So as you see, the people on the street are also, they are, uh, they look like European style. This also inside uh, the um, university. So they are university students of this early period of the 20th century. And here we have um, public figure who is so famous for her uh, Western um, thoughts uh, as she is Hoda Sharawi. She is a great feminist in Egypt. She actually uh, invited the Egyptian women to throw their head covers and saying it's not, uh, it's just a cultural habit and so it's a kind of adaption for the European or Western uh, culture. So now let's see also another impact of that long foreign rule of Egypt. 
we have also ethnic groups in Egypt. So the last foreign rule of Egypt was through the European colonization in the 19th and 20th centuries, uh, who, uh, which decided the boundaries between Egypt and surrounding countries. And this resulted in dividing groups of the same cultural identity. This case, we can see it clear in the case of Nubians uh, who were divided between Egypt and Sudan since uh, the colonization decision of fixing the boundaries between Egypt and Sudan through the agreement of 1899. So Nubians are uh, divided between Sudan and Egypt and we can see them, especially in the south uh, part of Egypt in Aswan. So uh, they, till now, they could maintain their own um, distinctive uh, culture. Seeing here in the picture, you can see their uh, music, their uh, dance, their own um, customs and clothes. Actually, um, till the present time, Nubians still struggle to maintain their identity and their rights as a good step uh, in this way uh, of the multiculturalism. We can see that in 2015, Nubians attained a political achievement, assigning their own parliamentary seat for the first time in Egypt's uh, parliament. In these pictures, you can see all those colorful um, painting on the um, uh, Nubian houses. So this is Nubian architecture, which are which you can see in Aswan. They have uh, Nubian villages with this colorful painting um, walls. So another uh, example for ethnic groups living in Egypt are, uh, is the Berbers uh, or Amazigh people. Uh, they are uh, concentrated in uh, Siwa Oasis in the Western uh, border, uh, close to the Western borders with Libya, where they can meet also other groups of Amazigh. Actually, Amazigh, they, you can find them in um, North African countries like Algeria, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritania. They keep their distinct uh, dialects, uh, their distinct language, rituals, uh, traditions, and customs. They also have their own World Amazigh Congress organization and they have their own uh, uh, president uh, in uh, Egypt uh, for this organization, I mean. Uh, there, there is a lady who, um, uh, whose name is uh, Amani El Wishahi. She is vice president of the World Amazigh Congress organization in Egypt. Actually, she uh, says that um, Amazigh in Egypt, they are uh, divided into two parts. Uh, one lives in uh, Siwa, uh, having their own, um, maintaining their own culture and even their own language. So they are called the speaking Amazigh. And also they have another part uh, living in Qina, uh, specifically in Qina in south of Egypt. Um, and they, they are called uh, the gathering of tribes of Hawara. Uh, those uh, tribes of Hawara, uh, actually they don't uh, speak Amazigh and they, um, like they mix it with other Arab uh, tribes uh, all over uh, the, uh, throughout the time. Uh, so uh, you can't distinguish them from other Arab tribes. So here, uh, this scene is from uh, Siwa, uh, Siwa Oasis, with also those colorful uh, houses of Amazigh. They have their own distinctive culture seen in their, the colors and their architecture and um, the, uh, the way of living and 
here the clothes. Yeah. So another part uh, of our talk today about multiculturalism and um, uh, uh, this uh, diversity, cultural diversity in Egypt, um, we can examine the role of Egyptians abroad, their contributions to multiculturalism of Egyptian society. Uh, actually, the Egyptian society continued um, the same trend, more westernized. Um, maybe we can say till the defeat of the war of uh, 1967, many Egyptians, they think uh, that this was a turning point uh, for changing the attitude of Egyptian society as uh, as you know, when you face crisis, you um, much uh, more um, searching your religion, like um, uh, reviewing your attitude, your religious attitude. So one of the impacts of that military defeat was clear in, uh, in, in, in this thinking, rethinking for Egyptians about their religious attitude. So, I guess from this uh, era, uh, those religious, strict religious uh, groups emerged. And also we have um, economic crisis in Egypt uh, due to this uh, defeat. So uh, because of that also many Egyptians had to immigrate to other countries to find um, their um, uh, more opportunities to develop their economy. So many of them went to Gulf countries and to Saudi kingdom and others, they went to Europe, America, uh, Australia, other Western countries. So those people who went to Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries uh, brought with them uh, the, the cultures of those uh, countries with uh, a little bit strict uh, uh, rel religious thinking, while the others who immigrate to Europe and uh, US and other uh, Western uh, societies, they also brought with them those thoughts of those um, and those culture of those uh, societies. Uh, in 2019, Egypt had the largest number of people living abroad, according to the World Migration Report of the uh, UN. And so the immigration trend increased since it was recognized as a con constitutional right, according to the 1971 constitution. Uh, the estimated number of Egyptians living abroad exceeded 9.5 million of Egyptians since 2017. 70% of them are living in uh, Arab countries and the others uh, live in um, Western societies like uh, America, like Italy, like Europe, I mean, and uh, Australia. So those Egyptians also contribute to the multiculturalism by the foreign cultures they gain and they bring back with them uh, when they visit Egypt or when they contact with their families and friends in Egypt. So seeing a picture like this, this picture is um, for ladies uh, in a line for the um, voting for the elections, for maybe presidential elections by that time. Uh, this, um, this picture shows this variety of uh, culture, actually. As you see here, you can see like strict Muslim, here more moderate Muslim, and here more westernized. So you can see this uh, cultural, cultural diversity in the clothes of Egyptian women. <laughs> Here also, this is the first parliament after the two, 2011 uh, revolution. Seeing those women uh, as members of the parliaments, 
they have with them um, different uh, culture, uh, variety of uh, cultures that we can see through their clothes. Uh, at last, I want to speak about the education system in Egypt as it also has its impact or its contrib contribution to the multiculturalism of the Egyptian society. Actually, the edu educational institutions in Egypt um, has a variety of foreign education system. So we can see a clear multiculturalism through the foreign educational system uh, or in educational institutions presented um, uh, or represented different foreign educational system found in all levels of education, starting with kindergartens to schools and universities. So we have Americans, uh, American schools, uh, universities, and also British, French, German. Recently, we have also Japanese and Korean universities. So they, these are few examples of those foreign institutions providing official system of education following their culture. So, you know, the um, Egyptians, uh, Egyptian students, they uh, learn American history in the American schools, for example. Uh, same while we have um, Egyptian universities are also uh, attracting many foreigners to come to uh, study in Egypt. So we have the Cairo University, we have also uh, Al-Azhar University, which is considered as the most prestigious university of Sunni Islamic uh, education. So it attracts uh, yearly about uh, 30,000 students from all over the world, the Islamic world, uh, about 100 countries. Here is the picture of Al-Azhar uh, University and here Cairo University, picture of American University in Cairo, German University, British University, here also German University, French University, and recently uh, Japanese University. Also Korean University, we have one in Egypt recently established. So as you see, Egypt is a country of a rich cultural uh, diversity. Uh, as we, we saw, it, it's through its long history with uh, many rulers uh, of uh, foreigners and with many uh, foreign uh, settlers. They all uh, mixed together with the Egyptian society and brought with them their uh, foreign culture. And multiculturalism appeared in the Egyptian society from all the times, as many uh, foreigners of different origins ruled Egypt and invited people of their origins to immigrate to Egypt, while encouraging other foreigners also to settle down in Egypt, providing them with many privileges. Uh, so this long foreign occupation was reflected in the multiculturalism of Egyptian society, not only through the foreign migrants uh, settled in Egypt, but also through the ethnic groups divided through uh, the political borders between countries after the independence of Egypt. Uh, moreover, we saw also that Egyptians living abroad and the foreign educational system uh, in Egypt um, those also contribute to the multiculturalism of the Egyptian society. So uh, by this, uh, we came to the end of our lecture today. I hope it was useful and I enjoyed it with you. Okay, thank you.